Hey y'all, one of my favorite concepts to teach in second grade was when I got to introduce multiplication to my students. They loved it. Their eyes would light up really big because it made them feel like they were growing up. You know, the term like all year long, at least in my classroom, I always felt like I always heard when do we get to learn multiplication? When do we get to learn multiplication? Like, I don't know why that's such a big deal to kids, but it is. And so at least where I always have lived and where I have always taught, multiplication was kind of one of the last skills that we taught in the school year. Now, depending on where you live, it might be a little bit different, but today we are gonna talk about a strategy that I have always used for introducing multiplication using repeated addition and arrays. So if you're ready, give this video a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button below, and let's dive in and get started. So as I just mentioned, I always love to introduce multiplication to my kids, and I'm going to share a strategy that's called the get strategy. I actually learned this when I was in my student teaching. I was a student taught in a second grade classroom and it is something that just kind of always stuck with me. And over the years, I found it to be really successful when it came to introducing multiplication with repeated addition in my classroom. And so what does get stand for? Well, it stands for groups times each equals total. And I want you to stick with me because I have a really fun freebie for you. At the end of this video, I'm going to share how you can get this strategy poster along with a free activity that is perfect for small groups and math centers and how you can get it sent to your inbox. So stick with me. I'm going to share that at the end of this video. But let's take a look at an example of how you would introduce and teach the get strategy to your students. So when first introducing this strategy, I would really focus on what G-E-T stands for. Now, I'm going to show you using this work mat, but I do want to express that you do not have to use or have this work mat in order to use this strategy in your classroom. I always would have my kids pull out a dry erase marker and have them write on their desks or have them participate on a whiteboard or in their math journal. Um, so you do not have to have this particular work mat in order to complete this activity or to teach this strategy. So the first thing we would do is I would talk about what G-E-T stands for. It represents groups is the G, groups times each is the E, equals total. When you are first introducing this concept to your students, more than likely, you are going to have them practice making equal groups. So I have just a simple set of task cards, and it might say make blank groups of blank. And that is how we begin starting practice with this strategy. So in this example, it says make four groups of blank. Five. The first thing we are going to do is we are going to start with G. What does G represent? Groups. And to keep it simple, I would always have my students just draw circles. So we are going to draw four circles to represent our four groups. Now it says make four groups of five. So that means that inside each of our four groups, we need to add five dots. So inside each of our circles, I would have them draw five dots. You could have them draw X's. You could have them draw a different symbol. I always kept dots just to keep it simple. So we have four groups. Inside of each group, we have five dots. 
Now it is time to come up with the total. So down here on our work mat, there are three blanks. So in the first one, it says blank groups of blank. So I'm going to ask my students, okay, how many groups did we draw? And I'm gonna remind them that groups are represented by our circles. So we drew four groups of, that of is going to also stand for how many are inside of each group. So we drew four groups of five. Now it's time for us to write our repeated addition sentence. So how many do we have in our first circle? We have five. Plus how many is in our second circle? Five. Plus how many is in our third? And how many is in the fourth? Then I talk about how we can solve the t to find the total of how many dots we have by adding five plus five plus five plus five. But that can get really tricky and it can, there can be a simpler way. So after we solve our repeated addition sentence, five, 10, 15, 20, now I show them how they can simplify this repeated addition sentence by writing a multiplication sentence. And this is when they think that things get really cool. So I actually have them write out G E T and you can actually have them put a time sign and an equal if you want. So they can write groups times each equals total. And so I say, okay, how many groups did we draw? That's going to be the first thing that we do. Groups are represented by the circles. There were four of them. So we're gonna write a four under the G. Then this is when they also think that it's really cool is they get to write a times symbol, a multiplication symbol. So now groups times each, what number represents how many are in each group? Five equals our total. So four times five equals 20. Because we added the number five, we added it four times. Now I wanna show you how you can teach this same concept, but we're gonna make it a little more hands-on and we are going to use manipulate. So now in our next example, let's make five groups of two. So down here in the bottom of my work mat, I'm actually going to go ahead and write five groups of two, just so that I can take these cards and move them out of the way so you can see our mat clearly. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, starting with the get strategy, is G. What does G stand for? It stands for groups. So how many groups do we need? We need five groups. So I'm going to draw five circles. One, two, three, four, five. Now to make it a little more hands on, I am going to use manipulatives. I am just going to use these mini erasers that I got from Target. You can use linking cubes, you can use counters, any sort of manipulative will work. So now we have to determine how many go inside each group. So we did our G, now it's time for E. Five groups of two. That means that two are going to go inside of each circle. So with my manipulatives, I am gonna place two of these mini erasers inside each circle. Now it's time for me to write our repeated addition sentence. How many do we have in the first one? Two. So we have two plus two plus two plus two plus two equals 10. And we want to explain to our kids that the reason why we want to simplify this into multiplication is because when we add two plus two plus two plus two plus two, that 
kind of becomes a mouthful and it can get a little confusing, especially when you start working with higher numbers. So now it's time for us to write our multiplication sentence. So I have them write out groups times each equals total. So G times E equals T. How many groups did we draw? Five, that's gonna go under the G. How many are in each group? So times two equals our total. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And we skip count to find our answer. So there you have it. That is the GET strategy for introducing a multiplication and teaching repeated addition to our students. Now, I promised that I had a fun freebie for you. So if you want to head on over to the link in my description below this video, you are going to find a link to a blog post. Inside that blog post, it kind of breaks down this strategy just a little bit more. There is also going to be a section where you can grab a free get strategy poster. It comes in color and black and white. So not only will you get the poster, but you are going to get the work mat that I just showed you with that set of task cards. You can have it absolutely for free sent straight to your inbox. All you need to do is type your name and your email address and it will be sent to you right away. Now, I do wanna recommend that you use your personal email address for this because what I have learned is that most teachers, you like to use your school emails and I 100% understand that. But a lot of times what happens when you go to sign up, if your school has a really heavy spam filter set up, which a lot do, a lot of the times then the freebie won't make it to your inbox because it's being blocked by school spam filters. So that is why we encourage and recommend you use your personal email address. But if you have any questions about the Get strategy, I would love to know. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one. Bye.